Hello everyone, welcome to another awesome video here uh, from LearningFileMaker.com. I'm Richard Carlton, I'm here with Phil Calkins, right Phil? Yeah. Now Phil it. occupies a little interesting space in the internet. He's kind of the curator, a public curator for all the known bugs that have been submitted to FileMaker and he maintains a FileMaker database list that's available to you to download and you can check to see what bugs FileMaker knows about. So if you run into a situation where you see a bug in FileMaker, you think it's a bug, Phil probably knows about it. And certainly if he's seen it or seen someone report it, then he's added it to his database. And that's really cool, Phil. So tell us how you got into this. Well, it's just uh, I was getting more and more involved in answering questions in uh, this particular uh, forum, the FileMaker forum. And they have an issue report section for reporting bugs. But we kept getting lots and lots of very legitimate complaints that people were reporting a bug and they were the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth person to report the same bug. And they were getting pretty ticked off because they were wasting a lot of time very carefully writing up an accurate description of what the problem was, only to be told that it was already reported. And so I started collecting all of these different bug reports just into a thread within the forum itself. I wasn't even using a database at that point. And as that thread grew and got more and more reports added to it, and then we added a second thread for FileMaker Go bugs, I started creating this database just for my own personal use. I wasn't even thinking of other users at the time, uh, just to manage all those posts and where the links were and all the connections. And eventually I realized it was a lot easier to do a database search on the database than it was on the discussion forum page. And so I just started posting a download link for this file so that other people could download it and do a quick check to see if the uh, strange behavior they were encountering was something that had already been documented. And some person uh, with TS by their name in the, in the FileMaker forum had confirmed that either they could reproduce it or that they knew about it or some sort of official confirmation that so, they really so, were so having some, a problem. So a person in the forum with TS by their name uh, will indicate that that's a tech support person from FileMaker. Mm -hmm. And so when they confirm it, then you would add it to the database. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Well, how do we use this? I mean, so this database, I'm going to put a link here on the video right down below where you can get to this. But now that we've got a copy of the database, how would we, we just, I guess, use the find button? Yeah. That's and, now a little search popover. You're, and so say I want to find something in Go, like a Go problem. How would I do that? Why don't you do that for me? Okay. Now, if you look at the screen behind here, the blue screen behind, there are some more detailed instructions on some of this stuff. Yeah. Um, That's if we read the instructions. Yeah. Most people never yeah. read the Like, I yeah. never read the instructions. Yeah. But as, as they say, if you want to hit the notes, there's more information there. But there's a um, category, I application for iOS application that I just kind of threw in there. And anything that's a FileMaker Go bug should have that tag on there but then you can build a list of keywords um, over on the right and you the uh, bug can be an open or closed bug and o an open bug obviously means that there's been no information out at this time that the latest release of Fixes. FileMaker has fixed it. Yeah, fixed it. Yeah, so closed bug may be a very valid report. If you're still using an older version, it still may be a bug for you even though when it's when it's closed or somebody else. So we keep the closed stuff in there. And um, you can search a specific field, so you can search by the title, search by the description. Uh, you've got a drop down, so you can actually go by uh, an application version. So here again, also you've got FileMaker Go. So there's actually two ways you can specify that. And then right next to it, the next field, you can even throw in a version number. Searching by version number, though, is very... Um, I, I recommend against it unless you've got a very specific need for it, because a lot of these things report the version number at the time it was reported by that particular person making the report and the problem is is that bug may actually apply to earlier versions and it may apply to later versions and that information isn't likely to make it into the database because it's all coming out of whatever I see in the forum yeah and, and that information isn't going to be there to put in there it's important to note the way engineering works is that bugs get reported all the time and depending upon the priority of the bug it may or may not be fixed in the near future or in the next release so if you assume for example that FileMaker fixes all the known bugs, all of them, and then issues a release. That's not the way the world works. FileMaker takes the top reported bugs, fixes those, then issues a release. Yeah. There are some long-standing bugs that have probably been there years. Oh, some of them have been there for years. One of the interesting things I found out about just here at DevCon was that when they did do the 14 release, they actually did take one developer and say, we want you to look at some of these long-standing bugs that, that people have been publicly complaining about. We want you to run down through those and see how many of those you can retire. And that's probably why when 14 came out, I had over 60 of these different records that I had to mark off as closed 
that some people like T.S. Gal in the forum uh, had very carefully gone through and pulled up the original issue report, added a new post saying, this one's now been taken care of in FileMaker 14. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. That's nice that they did that. Well, if we want to see the, the known Go 14 bugs, for example, right now, how would we, so let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, so you hit fine. If okay. there are multiple matches, you get a list. Okay. And it's, you know, a typical thing where you can sort by clicking title columns and uh, you can tell by the column on the right whether they're open or closed. And by the way, I tend to use this database also as a test bed. So sometimes there's some odd things that pop up and disappear in different releases of this thing because I was testing an idea. Right. <laughs> I wanted to see how it worked. I don't always remember to put it back to the way it was. So found here's originally. one right here: uh, text split vertically at page break in PDFs. Mm -hmm. Currently, FileMaker uses its own text engine, but FileMaker Go relies on iOS engine. And I've talked about that in my training. FileMaker Go is unable to attain the precision needed to page break properly. Yeah, and that's that has been on and off. A uh, well, that's an older Go go one here. Is this open or closed currently? It's probably closed. Um, this one has not been specifically reported as closed. It very probably is closed, it is probably but is nobody's closed. told me. Yeah, right. And that's that's one of the vulnerabilities of this system is if you want to see if it's really current, you, you're not going to find that here. If you're going, is this a bug? Is it a bug? And does FileMaker uh, know about it? Yes. That's where this comes in handy. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean necessarily yeah. it's resolved. Because yeah. I could tell you that you know any mission critical bugs that go back to Go 1.2 have probably been resolved. Yeah. I mean, you notice it's iOS 5. Yeah. You know. I mean, way back. Yeah. So. But you know, you can also look at some of the other ones here that go out to you know little different version numbers. Like here, this one was in 12. You know, and here was a case where you you didn't get a cursor in the, in the uh, field like you expected. The big thing here is you get a quick synopsis here. This is literally a co an edited copy and paste out of the original report and then you're one mouse click away from actually seeing the form itself, the actual report. So this opens up your, your uh, default web browser, drops you right into the um, to the ah. message thread yeah. and so you can actually read the conversation that took place between the original reporter you see here uh, TS Wildcat there's that TS that That's, tells you that, it's a that file maker that indicates a file maker employee mm -hmm. right. normally this little icon to the left tells you too but some people drop file maker icons in as their avatar Okay. so you know look carefully and uh, the newer ones you'll even see a post by me where I indicate that this thing got, got put into the uh, database Okay. Cool. That's you know and um you also have it's one of these things where it's like you know pick the method you want to use getting back here to this guy you also have this web tab here that opens up a web browser also to the same location so okay. you could do it within it. that was actually more for my internal use because this tells me that my URL link up here is valid because if I get yeah. nothing up here that's a quick check yeah. you know and these other things because I use this to actually build entries into the um, FileMaker forum itself Let's see if I can go to a current one. Some of these real old ones don't have it, but oh, that's why I'm not forgetting to scroll the page. I'm used to a little Windows format with a little different scroll bar there. So, there like, you go. yeah, Mirror Sync. Oh, There's that's a very nice. recent one. Okay, <laughs> Mirror Sync can crash FileMaker Go 14. Isn't that fun? But over here, I've got a comment URL, and what this takes you to is the other place where this is summarized. This was where things started out originally, and for some reason, that keeps kicking Firing. us back into a login screen. But I can give you a verbal description of what goes on. Yeah. What you should get is to you get over to a different thread here and report an issue where you see all of these entries in like a table of contents. And that was just the original place I put it. I still put it there for archival reasons. Some people subscribe to that list. So whenever I put a new one there, they get a notification that a new bug's been confirmed. Oh, wow. So, so there they is, would go into a report an issue? Yeah. So there's a thread here in recent issue that's called... Um, the known bug list for FileMaker Pro, and then there's another one that's a known bug list for FileMaker Go. And all of those posts link back here to this database, and that's where this comment URL comes in. And that's mainly for me, because if somebody comes in and say, whoops, you made a mistake there, you didn't write that upright. Somebody tells me that, or they go back to the original issue report, and they're correcting the uh, tech support person on what they put in, then I've, I've got a quick one-click away to go in and find that information and, and sure. edit it as well. So. Well, this is cool. So this is a free database. It's a free service. Mm -hmm. Phil is doing a great job. So if you ever want to say hi, Phil, or thank him, how would people thank you, Phil? <laughs> that would be an interesting question. I do have a PayPal account. And uh -huh. if you look in this blue information, somewhere in here you will find my email well, we're address. We're going to put a link at the bottom of the yeah, screen right now. There it is. Now. There it is right there. 
So that email address, you can use PayPal with that email address. I also have a couple files out there called Adventures in FileMaking. They have that same information. There is another source of information here. Again, this wasn't really designed for the public, but some people use it. There's a lot of very commonly asked questions. And if you go in here, you'll find that you can search information like uh, many-to-many relationship, for example, and you'll find information that pops up. That This is stuff I use just to post quick responses to the um, sure. uh, to the forum. Sometimes there's a download link that I drop in there that says, you know, go get that file and it's a demo. You know, my adventures and file making links are in there and everything else. So it just gives a quick entrance. And as you see over here, I was testing an idea. And you see, sometimes you see funny things popping right. up in this thing that come and go. But... Well, cool. We want to encourage people to send you a couple bucks in PayPal if they find that you've done them a, a great value and a service. And I think that for people who run into bugs and need to know about it, and it's kind of mission critical, this is a great tool. So if you want to uh, donate to the Phil cause, uh, Phil Mod Junk cause, then uh, he gets a couple bucks and it encourages him to keep doing the job, which is very useful. I know that I'm going to send Phil a PayPal myself. So uh, we got the link down here at the bottom of the screen. We also have the PayPal link. And if people want to contact you, they can use that email, uh, philipca at live.com. They can also email you there, right? Yeah. And uh, private messages through the forum work really well, too. As just if you need to contact me directly because, you know, maybe you saw something you didn't. I am the FileMaker community leader with, for this particular forum, and it's my work with the known bug list that's what led the, some of the guys at FileMaker to sign me up for this. So. Okay, great. <laughs> well, there you go. So that's it for today. We're live at DevCon 2015 talking to Phil Calkins, better known as Agent Phil Mod Junk, who wears his 007 secret uh, identity <laughs> frequently. And uh, we'll catch you next week. Thanks.